Finally, Elon Musk's SpaceX could start the countdown for its first orbital launch. The company has been working its way towards the program's first orbital test flight, which CEO Elon Musk says is coming soon, and could take place as soon as the end of February. The historic mission would pair Starship Vehicle Ship 24 with Super Heavy Booster 7. SpaceX has been building excitement for the launch through images and video. It stacked its huge Starship vehicle earlier this week, placing the Ship 24 upper stage spacecraft atop the Booster 7 first stage with the chopstick arms at the company's Starbase site near the South Texas city of Brownsville. The dramatic footage was captured by drone, then released by SpaceX on Monday on Twitter. On Thursday, SpaceX continued to share some impressive new looks at the ship and rocket together. These shots, taken from much closer to the ground, show the stainless steel vehicle and its huge Mechazilla launch tower rising through low-lying clouds at Starbase, which sits right on the Gulf of Mexico. The SpaceX CEO himself also shared a closer photo featuring a Starship full stack and its gigantic launch tower. At the same time, he once again emphasized that Starship launch attempt soon. But before the next-gen spacecraft takes to the skies, it has to make it through a series of tests. As SpaceX said via Twitter, team are stepping into a series of tests prior to Starship's first flight test in the weeks ahead, including full stack wet dress rehearsals and hold down firing of Booster 7's 33 Raptor engines. The the first full-stack WDR for the Duo 247 will highly likely occur next week as we now have some 12-hour test windows on January 17th, 18th, and the 19th. But in regards to a full 33-engine static fire with Booster 7, Starship could be de-stacked before that even happens, and Musk also agrees. And if everything goes smoothly, both during testing and granting the launch license, Musk and his team could conduct the highly anticipated launch of their Mars-bound rocket. But there are are always a lot of uncertainties with a new orbital launch of new equipment, so it's wise to enjoy the views of Starship in pristine condition while you still can. In another bit of interesting news, after many years of delays, all the parts of the United Launch Alliance's next generation Vulcan Centaur rocket are about to converge in Florida for their first launch. Unveiled back in 2015, ULA has been working on Vulcan Centaur since at least 2014, following Russia's first illegal invasion of Ukraine, countries around the world attempted to punish the aggressor mainly through economic sanctions. In the US, those sanctions included bans on the import of most Russian aerospace technologies including the RD-180 engines that still power ULA's Atlas V workhorse rocket in 2023. In 2014, ULA announced that it would work with Blue Origin to integrate the startup's BE-4 engine into a new rocket booster to end its reliance on Russian engines. More than eight years later, that BE-4 engine is finally ready for flight, and the rest of the first two-stage Vulcan rocket appears to be right behind it. In a burst of New Year activity, CEO Tori Bruno confirmed that Vulcan Flight 1's core stage, or the booster, has been fully assembled, buttoned up, and loaded onto ULA's transport ship. The aptly named rocket ship will ferry the booster from ULA's Decatur, Alabama factory to Cape Canaveral, Florida, where it will enter the final stages of launch preparations at the company's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. At the LC-41 Pad. Simultaneously, ULA has finished proofing the proof testing Vulcan's first Centaur 5 upper stage, a larger and more advanced version of the Centaur 3 stage ULA and its predecessors have been flying for decades. Centaur 5 is almost twice as wide as Centaur 3 and is designed to hold two and a half times more propellant, enabling significantly higher performance in some scenarios. Additionally, while ULA has partially abandoned plans for a reusable upper stage called ACES, or Advanced Cryogenic Evolved Stage, some of those improvements may still be added to Centaur 5. Compared to 3, Centaur 5's longevity in space will grow from 8 to 12 hours. ULA is also developing a mission extension kit that will allow it to operate for multiple months, unprecedented for a rocket stage powered by cryogenic propellant. Photos taken by a local paper appear to indicate that ULA is shipping one or more payload fairing or nose cone halves alongside Vulcan's first flight-worthy booster. While while unconfirmed, it would make sense for ULA to ship Vulcan's booster and fairing together. Another tweet from Tori Bruno indicates that ULA intends to ship Vulcan's booster and upper stage together, increasing the odds that all components will be aboard rocket ship when it departs for Florida. Vulcan Centaur is ultimately designed to fully replace ULA's existing Delta IV and Atlas V rockets. Building and operating two very different rockets simultaneously is undoubtedly one of the reasons that ULA's launch costs are so much higher than SpaceX's. And 
simplifying to a single production line is one clear way to achieve major cost savings. ULA hopes that the simplest version of Vulcan will eventually cost around $100 million per launch, which is still far above SpaceX's base Falcon 9 price, but potentially more competitive than Atlas V. What's unclear though, is that Bruno has previously stated that Atlas V's launch costs have fallen to about $100 million a piece thanks to unrelated cost savings. Regardless, Vulcan Centaur will be a capable rocket and its price is close enough to SpaceX's extremely competitive Falcon 9 for it to be mostly valid option, for it to be a mostly valid option for launch customers who want diversity or want to avoid SpaceX for less rational reasons. Vulcan has secured more than 70 launch contracts thanks to ULA's intimate relationship with the US military and Amazon's reluctance to launch its Project Kuiper internet satellites with the company behind Starlink, a direct competitor. Fitted with two BE-4 engines, six solid rocket boosters, and unknown upgrades, ULA says the most capable version of Vulcan Centaur will be able to launch up to 12.1 tons to the moon, 15.3 tons to geostationary transfer orbit, and 27.2 to low Earth orbit. To higher orbits, the most capable Vulcan variant will be fairly competitive with SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket. To low orbits, it will generally match or slightly exceed the performance of an expendable Falcon 9, but likely for a much higher price. By every measure, the simplest and cheapest Vulcan variant is significantly less capable than even a partially reusable Falcon 9, and will likely cost 50 to 100% more. The main target of Vulcan's first launch is the moon, which indicates ULA's confidence in their unflown rocket. Vulcan Flight 1 will carry two main payloads, the first two Amazon Kuiper satellite prototypes and Pittsburgh startup Astrobotics first Peregrine Moon Lander. After deploying both Kuiper satellites in low Earth orbit, Centaur 5 will fire up again and attempt to send the 1.3 ton Peregrine Lander directly to the moon, also known as a Trans Lunar Injection Burn. Developed as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program, Peregrine will be tasked with entering orbit around the moon and eventually landing up to 70 to 90 kilograms of payload on the lunar surface. The first Peregrine Moon Lander is fully assembled and currently in the middle of extensive integrated testing. If successful, ULA CEO Tori Bruno says that Vulcan will likely be ready to launch sometime in the first quarter of 2023, though the second quarter is more likely. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and my team and I will see you next time.